Hey, what's up YouTube? This is the Frugal Millennial and this week I'll be unveiling my first ever investment property. I'll go through a detailed rundown of how much I spend buying this property and what I did to improve it in order to rent it out. The location of this property and whether it's worth buying into the current market. And please help the YouTube algorithm by doing this thing by hitting the like and subscribe button. Here we go. Now the unit is located in a southeastern suburb called Dandenong North. It was ranked as the top 20 real estate growth suburb in Melbourne by Real Estate Institute of Victoria in 2014. Dandenong is 33 kilometers from the Melbourne CBD and it's closely located to Monash University which is a top ranking uh, university in Australia and well known for its arts and science faculties. Between the years of 2005 to 2014, the local government was pouring over $99 million in improving the local infrastructure of Dandenong. This included spending $13 million on drum theatre. Over $20 million was injected into improving and upgrading the Dandenong produce market. Over $50 million was put into municipal building projects and over $2 million was put into improving local streetscapes. On top of this, Dano had its own amenities, including its own hospital, lots of government schools, and a shopping precinct. The real estate in Dano was very cheap, and it was a growth corridor. As a rental market, it had low vacancy, and I love the fact that there was a lot of cultural diversity in this suburb not seen elsewhere. The only problem was the residents living in Dandenong were known for their low socio-economic background and that was correlated with high crime rate. But beyond that, because it's located in the growth corridor, it was a must-buy at the time. I saw all the potentials of buying into Dandenong North, but it was hard to convince my other half to buy in this area at the time because of the high crime rate. But this soon changed when our friends moved into the neighborhood just a few streets away where we eventually bought. So I was coming to the end of my PhD and was essentially still a poor uni student. And my partner had a contract job with a university. So essentially we were both really broke, but we managed to muster up $36,000 for a deposit. It was around Christmas time when I saw this property and it was literally the cheapest unit around in that area. So the original listing read, quietly tucked away, positioned at the end of the block, this two bedroom unit offers spacious bedrooms with building robes, new carpeting throughout, gas heating, separate toilet, aluminum windows, and your own single carport. There's a secure and private courtyard and a large backyard where the kids can play. Located within walking distance of shops, schools, and with a bus stop at the front, all amenities are accounted for. Excellent tenants paying $12,216 per annum or vacant possession is available. The choice is yours. When we went to inspect the place, what you saw in the listing is pretty much what you got. The walls were of this outdated beige color. There was an outdated kitchen with smelly cabinets. The bathroom looked very old and the vinyl on the floor was falling apart. This property had been listed on the market for 50 plus days, and because it was near Christmas time, the real estate agent, as well as the vendor, was very keen to get rid of it. So we bought this property back at the end of 2014 for $220,000. We managed to negotiate down to this price and save $10,000 in the process. The property was settled the following year on Valentine's Day. We decided to move into the unit as it was going to cost us next to nothing to live there. I was also studying a new job at Monash University as a scientist, so it was close for me to commute to. Another reason why we moved into the unit was because we could renovate bit by bit. Because the building was built in the early 80s, I was a bit suspicious that the materials they used at the time contained asbestos, so we got a building inspector to come through. 
and he noticed that the tiles in the bathroom were thicker than the tiles in the kitchen and this is highly likely that asbestos was used behind the tiles to bind everything together. This meant that in order to remove the tiles it would cost a lot of money. So we decided to leave the tiles. He also found that the vials in the kitchen contained asbestos. And again, to remove the vinyls, like the tiles, it would be very expensive. The trough in the bathroom was rusting throughout and was very old. Initially, we would have removed it, but because the tiles behind it contained asbestos, we decided to fix it by just applying this epoxy enamel, which is an industrial coating that's usually used for gates or metal chairs. One litre of this Metal Shield Gloss Classic Cream Top Coat Epoxy Enamel Paint cost us roughly around about $38. This paint doesn't require any primer, so once you've prepared your surface, you can apply this straight away. This took me a few hours to complete, and at the end you had this glossy finish to the trough, which made it look very new. Another thing I did to the bathroom was use this grout stain whitener, which is essentially a paste that comes out of this spongy head and you apply this to the grout and after a while you remove any excess paste. What it, this does is essentially whitens the discoloured grout and it brings out the tiles, making it look newer. So I did this one morning uh, in a few hours and it only cost me about $13.50. In order to solve the issue concerning the asbestos in the vinyl, I used this click-in floorboard system. This was to just cover any place that had the vinyls, including the kitchen, bathroom and toilet. The click-in floorboards are these thin plank of woods that have a ton and groove and they click into each other to make a seamless transition. They come in various width and some of them are made to look like wood but it's actually made from vinyl. Some are actually wood and some are made from bamboo and the price ranges depending on the quality that you choose and the thickness that you choose. The one that I purchased was 7mm in width and it was from a warehouse nearby my house and it was on special for $400 to cover kitchen, bathroom and toilet. My partner and I spent about three days working on this project and at the end the whole place looked so different and no more ugly vinyls. This is a before picture of the bathroom. You can see that the trough is a bit rusted, the tiles look a bit drab and the floor is actually covered in carpet. And this is an after photo of the bathroom. You can see that the trough looks glossier and the tiles look more vibrant and of course there's your floorboards. In addition to this, I added a new mirror on the back because the previous mirror was so tiny. I also applied a lick of white paint to every wall in the house. So this is the paint that I bought from Dulux. It's the Wash and Wear Low Sheen paint and I had it in Whisper White. It's low odour and low bulk. For the trims and doors, I used this Dulux Wash and Wear Gloss Vivid White paint. For the kitchen and bathroom where there's a lot of moisture, I use this Dulux Wash and Wear Plus Kitchen and Bathroom River White Low Sheen Paint. Now let's have a look at the other rooms. In the lounge room, I painted the doors, the trims and also the walls white. We had the gas heater in the lounge room replaced with a split system air conditioner which cost about $2,500 in total. The reason I chose a variation of white is because white is a very safe colour. It makes a room look bigger and it's timeless. In total we spent about $500 in paint. Not shown here is the hallway which we also painted white. For those who follow me on Instagram, I posted this photo last year about the kitchen where I said, the kitchen was stuck in the 80s. The cupboard smelled really bad so we left everything on the benches. We hired a family friend to gut and remove the kitchen. We then went shopping at Ikea for a new kitchen of a safe and timeless colour so it can be rented out easily. Naturally, we chose white and this range was also on special so it was the obvious choice. I spent a few hours putting the flat pack together and even got to catch up on TV shows whilst doing this. 
Our friend installed the kitchen, range hood, new taps and the new handles that I purchased online for only a few dollars each. Overall, we spent $3,000 which includes all materials and labour. This added instant value to our property and it also meant we could finally put our dishes, pots and pans in drawers and cupboards. Next we did some landscaping by replacing the lawn in the backyard with a gravel outdoor lounging area and a border where I planted some natives. This was a few weekends work to dig out the soil, lay the weed proof mat, add the gravel and tan bark. In total this cost us around about $500. Just looking at the overall expenditure, we spend in total $7,100 and majority of that we did ourselves. Now let's look at the return on investment or the ROI. We bought the place for $220,000. We spent, as I mentioned, $7,100 on renovations. The bank then reappraised the property and re-evaluated it to be $400,000, giving us a capital gain of $163,700. This is a return on investment of 74.41%. Once I got a new job on the other side of town we moved and now it's renting at $310 a week. Only a year ago my partner and I had refinanced the place in order to get more money out to buy other properties. Now finally before I go I want to give you my two cents worth of whether it's worthwhile buying into this area in the current climate. Dandenong North has seen unprecedented growth in the last few years. From 2018 to 19, you see a slight dip in the market due to regulatory changes on banks and overseas investors. Added to this is the current climate that is the illness, which might dampen the market a little, and there's evidence that we haven't seen the worst of a market collapse. There's also a growing trend around the world, and not just in Australia, of people wanting a sea or tree change. Because of all these factors, I will be holding on to my money at the moment and waiting to see what is going to happen in the next six months. If it dips, then we'll buy into the market. But one thing's for sure, I'm not in a rush to sell this property just yet. Just before I go, I should mention that I'm not a financial advisor. You should consider seeking independent financial advice to check out how the information provided here relates to your own circumstances. If you want to follow me on social, you can find me on the handle The Frugal Saver. Thanks for watching!